Now, Cornucopia Institute has put out just an extraordinary new piece of research. Uh, this actually came out, what was it, Tuesday. Uh, in fact, we, we were the, the first to carry the news at, at Natural News, and, and Cornucopia has tested all of these cereal products that claim to be natural. Now, here's why this is important out there, because all of you listening, you know you want to avoid GMOs. Most people do. Surveys now say that something like 80, 90 percent of people who are aware of the issue, they want to avoid genetically engineered ingredients in their food. So these food companies, the big mega corporations, they continue to use genetically engineered corn and soy and, and cottonseed oil and canola oil in their products, but they label them as natural. Because they know that most moms, most people shopping in the grocery stores, when they look on the store shelf and they see a box of cereal and it says, oh, it's all natural, wholesome from the earth. And it has a wonderful, beautiful name and it has pictures of grain on it and pictures of the earth on it. They think, the consumers think, and they've been misled, they think that that means no GMOs. They think that that means no pesticides. They think it means organic, but it doesn't. And this is the scam that is being exposed by the Cornucopia Institute. So joining us today from that institute is Mark Castell, the executive director there who was instrumental in putting this story together and breaking this news to the world. Mark, you're on the Alex Jones Show. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Mike. Hey, it's great to have you on. Greetings from uh, not so sunny Wisconsin today. <laughs> Yeah, a lot going on in Wisconsin. I bet you've been hammered by a media requests since putting this story out. What has been the reaction so far? Well, it's been big. Um, obviously, you have a lot of followers on your Natural News website. Um, it's now been just, I don't know if viral is the right term, but it's been carried by quite a few of the prominent websites, uh, trade media. Um, we're starting to get calls now from cereal and granola makers who aren't entirely happy and you really hit the nail on the head uh people think and most of us have a, a a working definition for the term natural in in the world whether it's on a, a package of food uh cereal or granola in this case uh and let's let's also define what's not natural i think if monsanto uh splices uh genes together and puts uh, a uh, naturally occurring pesticide in corn, uh, something that doesn't appear in the natural genome, wasn't created by God, was created by scientists to make a profit, most of us wouldn't call that, quote, natural. So it, it's outrageous that marketers can decide to put that word natural on a label and then include genetically modified organisms. Or you know, we could even talk about how that grain is raised besides the GMOs. And the, the USDA has done extensive study of cereal grains and found high residues of many toxic and carcinogenic chemicals in the uh, commodities themselves. Those aren't natural. And if, in, to make matters worse, I, I'd say this is almost rubbing salt in the wounds. After you get done harvesting those genetically engineered crops that were sprayed maybe with glyphosate, uh, Roundup is uh, Monsanto's trade name for this, the most popular herbicide in the world. After you get done harvesting those crops, you put them in a storage bin, and then you spray them with what's commonly called a crop protectant. And that's a fancy word for pesticide. They're spraying right on the oats or right on the wheat to make sure that rodents and, and bugs don't eat them in storage. And then they're in your kid's breakfast cereal. I, I, I just don't consider it natural, and that's why we've, we've published this report to try to differentiate what the difference is between certified organic food, where there are some standards, and natural, where the standards are, um, are developed by the marketing executives, and they mean, they mean whatever they want them to say. All right, so, so very quickly then, the, the most important takeaway point from this, for those listening, is that the word natural on grocery products is essentially meaningless. And your organization, through lab testing, 
uh, with a reputable lab that you already um, uh, told me the name of them. So I know I know that they're reputable. I don't know if you've released that publicly, but you found pesticide residues in so-called or I'm sorry, you found genetically engineered ingredients in so-called natural products. And you also know that the USDA says that these pesticides are typically used in those conventional grains that are found in natural products as right. well. Is that correct? That's correct, Mike. To make matters worse, not only did we find high levels of GMOs, we're talking about 28 to 100 percent. So this was not a little drift from the next farm or a grain bin that wasn't quite cleaned out well. These were the crops themselves were genetically engineered. So not only did we find that in, quote, natural cereal, some of those cereals were actually touting themselves as being GMO-free. So it, it was really um, it, it borderline or outright consumer fraud here. Well, this, is, this has sent shockwaves through the natural health industry. I, I mean, I, I've talked to many influential people in the industry who who are very concerned. Obviously, everybody wants the, the term organic to mean something. They want a non-GMO certification to really mean non-GMOs. And, and there's concern right now. A lot of consumers are confused. I mean, they're upset. We've had people who are upset. They, they were buying a brand, and they thought it was GMO-free, and it turns out it's not. Was there a cereal brand that came out of this squeaky clean that can be trusted, Mark? Uh, yes. In fact, what I want to encourage your listeners to do and your readers on your website is to go to the Cornucopia Institute website, and that's C-O-R-N-U-C-O-P-I-A dot O-R-G. Go to the Cornucopia Institute website and visit the serial report. It's called Serial Crimes. And on that, we have a scorecard where we list all the name brands, organic and natural, and what their policies are. And we rate them. And I'm happy to tell you that there are a bunch of 100% organic brands that you can really trust. And here's the kicker. Some of these, quote, natural brands, they cost more expensive than the organic ones. Oh, yeah, so, I saw that. Yeah, pretty outrageous. You know, the, the other interesting thing that, that the listeners might not be aware of is that, that many of these, quote, independent kind of green, crunchy companies, you know, we are talking about granola here, um, are actually hiding behind a facade. Uh, the, one of the biggest companies is Kashi. Uh, they're owned by Kellogg's. You'll never see the name Kellogg's on a package or their website. Another brand is Bare Naked Granola. It's one of the largest selling granola brands, probably the most expensive on the store shelf at your grocery, whether you stop, shop at Safeway or Whole Foods or one of the co-ops. Very expensive. That's, that's owned by Kellogg's as well. Another granola brand, Back to Nature, that sounds nice, that's owned by Kraft, but you'll never see their name on there either. Yeah, so, doesn't PepsiCo own one of the major brands out there? Is that Mothers? Or? Yeah, I think that's PepsiCo. So, yeah. yeah, so most of these people know that people are, um, uh, Quaker is uh, PepsiCo and, and I believe Mothers also. So, um, you, you, um, you know, when, when consumers are looking for value-added food and they're willing to pay a premium for it, most of the time that means organic. These natural ones are what I like to call organic light. Folks aren't just buying the granola or the cereal or the milk. They're buying the story behind that label, how it was produced, where it was produced, and they think they're supporting sound environmental stewardship. They, they think that they're supporting more humane animal husbandry when it comes to meat and dairy. And they think that one of the reasons it costs more is that economic justice for family farmers is built right into the price. So when they find out, we're really talking about uh, giant agribusinesses, giant corporations, um, exploiting the trust of consumers, that the people that are doing the farming might be exploited immigrants, not small family farmers. The cows might be living short, stressful lives. You know, none of those things um, comport with the... the values and the story they think they're paying extra for. Right, so exactly, this, this exactly. Will be an eye opener for some folks. Mark, I want to ask you to stay with us. We're about to go to a break, but I have a couple more questions for you on the other side of this coming break. Specifically, I'd like to ask you, what can parents and, and consumers look for on the labels 
to be as sure as possible that there are no GMOs in those products. To the best of your knowledge, I'd like to ask you that question when we return. This is The Alex Jones Show. We're going to continue to cover GMOs and the breaking news of today, the false flag assassination embassy bombing attempt. So stay with us here. We'll be right back on The Alex Jones Show. We are joined right now by Mark Castell from the Cornucopia Institute which has released a groundbreaking new report exposing the genetically engineered ingredient content in, quote, natural foods. It's extraordinary. We're going to talk to Mark for a couple more minutes, and then we're going to summarize some additional breaking news on the other news fronts. Oh, man, it is a day of just incredible news. There's so much going on here. If you see me looking around, if you're watching this on PrisonPlanet.tv, it's because I'm surrounded by by headlines and stories everywhere. This, there's so much to bring in. Uh, there's no way we're going to get to it all. But let's continue with Mark Castell here from Cornucopia. I asked you a question before the break, Mark, about how can parents and consumers know uh, with at least some certainty which cereals they can trust to be completely or substantially free of GMOs? Well, I think the best uh, weapon in making sure that, A, you have the safest food in terms of uh, chemical residues, uh, GMOs, uh, antibiotics, uh, hormones, is to look for that organic seal and to buy products that qualify for organic certification. Um, that is by far the most comprehensive uh, food production system that there's out there. It, it has a federal law. Uh, governing the standards. It has lots of independent certifiers that inspect every farm and every plant every year to, to obtain that certification. And then it has uh, governmental and corporate watchdogs like the Cornucopia Institute to make sure that the USDA is actually fulfilling their duties, and they haven't always done that. And uh, But there are lots of, most importantly, stakeholders. The individual farmers that believe in this, the consumers that believe in this, that's our intelligence agents out here at the Cornucopia Institute. We hear about problems. We're able to look at them. And other than organics, there's nobody looking over the shoulder of corporate agribusiness. They're just kind of painting this, uh, this pretty marketing picture and expecting you to buy products that are really conventional food. And the profit margins on these, quote, uh, natural products are through the stratosphere. Well, that's the other angle on this that really shocks a lot of people. And by the way, Jaron, can you bring up a symbol, uh, search the image of the USDA organic seal? I'd like to put that on the screen for those watching this. It's a green circular symbol, and you need to be familiar with this symbol so that you can look for it. That's what Mark was just mentioning. If it doesn't have that symbol, it's not certified by the USDA. And even though I personally don't have a lot of nice words for the USDA in general, I do know that their, their, their organic certification program is rock solid. I've seen their inspectors working and inspecting, and they actually do a very good job. That symbol means something, and I support that symbol. Uh, any comments on that, Mark? Yeah, we, we've seen uh, the, the organic programs relatively young. And during the first year, we uncovered, first years, we uncovered a pretty fair amount of corruption. Uh, at one point, we partnered with uh, Cornucopia and the um, uh, Washington Post on an expose of kind of a way too cozy relationship between the woman who was running the National Organic Program during the Bush administration and corporate lobbyists. And they were putting some synthetics in food that were illegal. They were allowing some giant factory farms to produce eggs and milk. And uh, we've cleaned that up. I, you know, I think the legacy of, uh, of Barack Obama at the USDA is mixed at best. Um, but in terms of the organic program, uh, they've appointed some people with high integrity. And uh, it's not where it should be yet. It's not 100% bulletproof, uh, Mike, but it's getting there. I think your impression is, is generally accurate. Well, the other thing that people need to realize, and this was also mentioned in your report in, in various ways, that GMO contamination is so widespread right now that it's virtually impossible to get a breakfast cereal made with corn or, or soy that doesn't have at least some small level of GMO contamination. But that, that might only be, what, 0.1% to 0.5%, something like that? Yeah, there, there are very low thresholds. It, you know... This really amounts to the fact that no matter 
what our number one issue is. And right now we're talking about food, but it could be about, uh, you know, whether the citizenry gets uh, accurate information before we go to war. I mean, this is like deja vu all over again. I mean, remember the Tonkin Gulf re Resolution. Um, you know, Mark, I've got to, I'm sorry I've got to cut you off here. We're, we're closing out this segment.